Hey everybody, Average Picker here. It's quite late at night, I'm quite tired. Um, but I wanted to show you this problem I have on this ICO um, dimple lock. And this is the ICO that I have been using, um, kind of progressively pinning um, to help learn and practice dimple picking. And it's proved to be pretty good, but I cannot get it when I completely fill it with pins. And so I decided to go back and instead of progressively pinning from front to back, do it from back to front. I made it to basically one pin <laughs> and ran into this problem. So let me uh, flip the camera and I'll show you what's going on. Um, because the larger part of this problem is that would project out to other locks leaves me really stumped. Okay, this is gonna be really difficult for me to explain um, or to manipulate <laughs> where the camera is right now, but bear with me. So this is the key, all right? And what we essentially have is, it's a six pin lock, and our sixth pin is essentially zero bitted. So what I have done, and that that's hard enough, that last pin can be a doozy. Um, but what I've done is I brought that pin from the back of the lock up to the front. So that's the pin you are seeing right there, and it's the only pin that is in this ICO currently. So we're gonna put a little bit of tension on it. Oh, that was just the tension wrench, sorry. I'm gonna put a little bit of tension on it and let's see. Okay, nothing. That was as high as I could pretty much lift it. And I promise you, I have been through every single one of my dimple picks and none of them have a good method for lifting that thing any higher. Um, it, it, it's just like, it just runs out of lift, essentially. Um, now I can't, I mean, it is doable if you really get in here and jam this thing up. But so you can see where it's at. That counter rotation you see is actually me banging into the warding. Yeah. Let me try to get it into the state again, though. Okay, there's no, let me make sure there's not any. Yeah. So, yeah. And you can see there is absolutely no spring pressure left on this spring. Uh, the spool, so this one has a driver spool, and that spool is right in here, and it's just barely hanging on to the uh, shear line. And it leaves this with no feedback. Um, and I, like, that's the bigger issue, is I'm like, how in the world, without a key, let's say I can't see the key, I don't have one to reference, but I end up even knowing that this pin essentially needs to be really kind of over lifted. Um, I have come in on this thing with every single one of my picks. I have come in on it um, from different angles. Now I have sort of solved the problem, at least for this lock um, and this one pin. I have not tried to put the whole thing together yet. Let's see. Yeah, it's just, you can see it, again, it just it, it flops right back down. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you part of the problem. We come back to the key. So you can see that's where the lift needs to be, which is pretty much dead even with the whole entire key itself. And you can see the pick is just barely, barely, barely doable. Um, and like I said, I, mean, I can grab something a little bit bigger Right, so that little tiny bit more, you know, we're a little deeper flagged. If this thing just pops right away, it's only because I've been doing this a million times. Yeah, nothing. Just not enough oomph even if we come in from this way. And 
there's just there's no so I try to do this around the camera is really difficult yeah um, and I mean I could sit here and I could go through every one of the picks I've got and continue to show you I mean eventually though you end up with this problem where pick itself much more hooked and curved but when it gets up to needing to do that full big lift you're just into that warding you essentially need to get like in this case of this pick it to stand up completely in there and that's just not doable um, you know with if it's going to be in the very back now I said I can solve this problem with the one pin in here currently in its one position um, I've not thoroughly tested this and the others, let's, see. let's square the lock up a tiny bit here. I don't know if this is actually gonna work. So if I go um, counterclockwise instead of clockwise, and I really get a big overlift on it and I use a little bit of pressure off of this finger you can see we turn over but what I'm essentially doing um, is I'm taking advantage of that tolerance in the lock right so we know um, top of keyway bottom of keyway it will tension the lock differently um, across its I don't know what is that horizontal plane its front to back plane it will put a little more pressure on the back or a little more pressure on the front um, and it's gonna be kind of the same thing um, with doing a dimple, if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise, it's going to tension that core a little bit more one way or a little bit more the other. And so what I've discovered is if I go counterclockwise and I use my middle finger to push that core up a tiny bit, that coupled with some, uh, you know, just fancy finagling on the thing will allow it to turn over. It's one pin and it's only in that one spot and like I showed you the broader issue is how would I even know if that was the problem in a lock that I didn't have a key for I don't see how I would detect it because like I mean it's it's sitting on the edge of that spool and there's just absolutely no feedback um, and there's no feedback because you've got to get that zero bitted pin so deep up in there um, and then once it's there you do get a feedback but that feedback happens the moment it turns over at least in this case because we only have the one pin in it um, and so it would essentially mean if you went in blind to a lock it would seem like it means you're just gonna have to start if you couldn't get it over lifting um, every single pin and this one being in the very back of the lock it all it becomes particularly problematic because it's easy to get off your line you know as you're going down there um, to where this, you know, your pick is shifted over a little bit more this way or shifted over a little bit more that way. So I just don't see how I would detect something like that. I mean, it's hard enough to do it with one pin in the front of the lock, um, much less with five others in front of it and in the back. Uh, and then, for all I know, it's only going to work going counterclockwise. Um, so yeah, there's my little dimple pick problem. Um, that, but it was it, fun tracking this down um, and I like I said you don't always have to get a lock open as long as you're learning something and I'll say like the changing up the techniques um, kind of really helped where I decided okay you know what I'm gonna stop doing this progressive pinning front to back I'm gonna do a back to front progressive pinning um, and I decided to do that because I was starting to run into issues after pin four and so I knew most of my issues were probably occurring, you know, somewhere later in the lock. Um, and so what better way to try to resolve that than just flipping it all around and doing it the other direction. When I didn't have any progress, I was like, let's figure out what's going on. 
Um, so we pulled this one pin, put it in a position where I knew I could absolutely work on it. Um, and that helped me kind of figure out what was going on because you can watch as in, you can visually see what's happening with your tension or with your uh, pick there, right? And is, is it hitting the warding? Is it not hitting the warding? How's it diverting? Things like that. Um, there was one other problem I had with it in the back of the lock, um, but I'm not going to go into that one at the moment. Um, but yeah, there we go, everybody. Have a good one.